everyone. Welcome back to Virtual Programming. So it's kind of a rainy, dreary day outside right now. There's a little bit of rain and it's not very bright. So I thought we could do a STEM project that would help brighten up our day. Now, when it rains and is sunny out, what usually appears in the sky? If you said a rainbow, you're absolutely correct. So what we're going to do today is make a rainbow that fits in a jar. And while we do that, we are going to learn about a STEM concept called density. So before we get started, let's get our materials all gathered together. For today's project, you will need four containers of the same size. You'll want these to be microwavable, food coloring, a spoon, a straw, a tall container. Um, you just want it to be clear and large enough to hold about two to three cups of water. You will also need some measuring items. So I have a half cup and a tablespoon. You will need some sugar. And then the last thing you will need is access to water and access to microwave. So once you get all your materials gathered, you can come back and we'll start the experiment. So, as you can see, I've gone ahead and filled my containers with a half cup of warm water from my sink. So one half cup in each container. And then I went and added some different drops of food coloring to each container. So right now, all these containers have the same amount of volume. Who knows what volume is? Volume is how much space something takes up. So each container has a half cup, and if we looked at it from the bottom, you can see that they take up the same amount of space. So what we're going to do next is we are going to add some sugar to the water, and this will change the water's density. Density is how compact something is, or how much matter is in an item in relation to its volume. So I know that's a little bit difficult to understand right now, but once we add in the sugar, you'll see how the density changes. So let's go ahead and get that started. So in order to change our water's density, we are going to be adding sugar to it. So I want you to go ahead and take your tablespoon and you are going to add two tablespoons of sugar to the yellow mixture. So one, two. And you're going to take your spoon and you're going to stir in that sugar until it completely dissolves. So if your sugar does not dissolve, that's okay. What you can do is go ahead and stick the container in the microwave and heat it up, I would probably do about 30 seconds at a time until the sugar is completely dissolved. So my yellow still has some sugar in it, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in the microwave and heat it up a little bit. So as you can see, the sugar is completely dissolved into my yellow water. What we're going to do next is we are going to add sugar to the rest of the containers but we are going to increase the amount of sugar. So we added two tablespoons to our yellow container. We are going to add four to our red, six to our blue, and eight to our green. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and you can do that at home as well. As you can see, I've added all the sugar into my containers and mixed it together well. Can you see on the bottom here that the volume of the water has slightly increased with the amount of sugar that we've added? So when we talk about density, it can be a little confusing. So density is a combination of volume 
how much space something takes up, and mass, how compact or heavy the matter inside the item is. So, right now we can say that the water that has the most sugar and the most density does have a larger volume than the rest of the waters. However, that's not always true. Imagine that we had a metal spoon and a plastic spoon, the same size and the same shape. So they might look exactly the same and look like they take up the same volume, but we know that the metal spoon is going to be heavier than the plastic spoon. So the metal spoon has more density. Its atoms are more compact and they're held more tightly together. So that's our explanation of density. I know it can be a little confusing without a visualization process. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to give our water a couple minutes to cool down. I'm going to put mine in the fridge and then we're going to layer them on top of them and give a better image of what density looks like. Welcome back to our stem rainbow in a jar. So I've taken some time and cooled my liquids down. I just left them in the fridge until when I put my finger into the water, it felt cool to the touch. The reason why we put our water into the fridge to get cold is that as liquids get colder, they get denser. The atoms compact and pull together. So now we get to put our rainbow into the jar and we'll see how density works. So you can go ahead and put your containers to the side. Remember which one is your most dense to least dense. So we're going to start by putting our most dense, so our green liquid, into the jar. And you can go ahead and pour the whole thing in. Do you see how it moves a little slower than normal water would? All right. So now that we have our most dense liquid in, we're going to take the next dense, so our blue, and we're going to transfer it into the jar using our straw. So we have to do this slowly and carefully, otherwise our liquids will mix together and we won't create a rainbow. So you're going to take your straw and stick it into the water. You can put your finger on top of the straw and when you lift it out, you'll see that it's contained. And we're gonna go and dribble it slowly down the side of the jar. So doing it slowly is very key. Otherwise the colors will mix together and our project won't work. So I'm gonna work on this and get the blue in and then I'll bring you back to the video. So I know it's a little hard to see from where the video is. I'm gonna very gently show you the blue layer that's sitting at the top of the jar. So I'm going to pour in the other two layers, again, very, very slowly, and then I will move the camera so that we can have a great view of our rainbow in a jar. Alright, so that took a little bit, didn't it? So, just as a heads up, that took me about 20 minutes to fill up those colors. And as you can tell from my video, I got a little impatient sometimes and tried to rush it and ended up making a mess. So, please, please, please be patient, otherwise this experiment won't work out as well as it could. 
that being said, how, what do you think of our rainbow jar? So I'm holding the paper up to give you a better clear view of it. As you can see, here on the bottom we have our green color, which if you remember, had the most sugar in it and is our most dense layer. Next we have the blue, which was six tablespoons of sugar. And then here in the middle, this is where Miss Chelsea got a little impatient and almost messed up the project. You can see just the tiniest little bit of red. And then on top is our yellow. Pretty cool, isn't it? I hope you enjoyed making a rainbow in a jar today. Thanks for joining me to learn about density and for being very, very patient with this project. I know it takes a long time, but it has such a cool result. This is something that you can put on your table for a day or two, and you can watch as the colors start to mix together again. As always, I'm really proud of everyone for continuing to learn and grow. I know that density is a bit of a tougher concept to explain, um, but I think he did a great job following along, and I hope that I made it make sense. If you followed along and made your own rainbow, as always, please do share. With that being said, thank you again for joining me. I wish each and every one of you all the best, and I'll see you on the next video.